many times in sports and other areas, you'll see people who are struggling. Struggle is not looked upon as a good thing. Struggle is something that people frown upon, but struggle is where the money is generated. Uh, the Life Warrior. Hey, Glenn, how do you tell the difference between hustler porn and legitimate, valuable business education? Well, it's a good question because it actually is part of one of the reasons I do these streams and I talk so much smack about hustler porn. I was working on my task list, got a lot of stuff to do today, and I was listening to some hustler porn. First thing is they never tell you exactly the steps. Because, see, this is the thing. I can give you steps, right? I can lay it out. I can lay out a blueprint for you. And I know from business, a doctor, a doctor can sit down and tell you how to cut someone open, to locate the, the spleen, the liver, whatever. They can tell you that like just like that. But it's going to take years to teach you what to do when shit goes wrong after you cut them open. So I can say, hey, this is what you do with an LLC. But due to your business, due to your other things, then you know there's still a need to hire me even though I told you how to do it. So the first sign is they never mention the process. Uh, second sign, you don't know what the product is. Hey, Johnny, I want you to join me and my friends tonight at 8 p.m. at this hotel. I can't tell you what it's about, but you need to be there and it's really exciting. Are you gonna come? Are you gonna come? Are you gonna come? Ha ha ha. So hustler porn typically is all about the accumulants of success. That's the stuff that comes after you're really successful. You don't get the Ferrari before you build a company. You don't get the big house before you build a company. You don't get the silicon enhanced chick before you build a company. So they teach you all, they, they tell you all this stuff, and this is what's called hind brain stimulation, hind brain teasing, because your hind brain is real simple. Me like, me don't like. Oh, me like silicone. Oh, me like Ferrari. Oh, we like. So hustler porn has no substance whatsoever. It's like that pretty chick who's rotten to the core. Looks good on the outside, but the inside is just deplorable. So that's how you can tell. Because typically they won't tell you. They'll tell you what people are making. You'll get a bunch of screenshots. But you will not. I'm going to give you another thing that you can tell. Because this is really, really works very well into this top today's conversation there was this guy who's a facebook friend of mine he's one of those amazon fba people and you, you know and a lot of them like to talk about hey i crushed sixty thousand this month hey i crushed ninety thousand this month hey i crushed 200 grand this month and then i i watch their pages and i'll see other things in their life for those you don't know, I used to work in a laboratory, so everything I do has somewhat of a scientific method to it. So there's what's called a baseline. So my friends who are really making money, their Facebook pages, they're just happy, and a lot of them don't pitch their business. So that's something that I stopped doing. I'm not pitching my business on my Facebook page. The other day I was talking about bison. Typically, the folks I really know that I've met, I know their business model, they never really hardly talk about their business. Every now and then, mostly they talk about their families. They talk about their trips, their vacations and stuff. And these are folks making, you know, legitimately seven and eight figures a year. You never see this stuff on their page. Why? They have no need to sell you shit because they're making money from their business. So these are just some of the things you can tell. Like someone is uh, another piece of hustle porn I was watching. Uh, the guy was talking about all this money he's making, but... He's doing a video in his kitchen because he kind of pans. The refrigerator's here. It's a very small kitchen. It's a very small kitchen. Typically, if you've lived in several houses or you've bought houses, you know you can tell how big a place is by the kitchen and secondary bedrooms. There's just certain things you know if that's a big house because the way they lay certain things out. So this person's making all of this money and is living in a shoebox. That makes no sense. You get a little money, ain't nothing, you, know, you don't even have, we're not even talking about mansion level here, okay? Uh, a nice two, you know, depending on where, a nice $250,000 house, nice $300,000, $400,000, $500,000 house, it's going to have some room. It's just going to have some room. So there's so many ways that you can kind of look, and part of your inner spirit is going, I don't know about this. 
because there's something that makes your spotty senses tingle. So if your spotty senses are tingling, um, yeah, that might be it. The thing is, in a lot of this with hustler porn, is that they don't talk about the struggle. Some people do, some people don't. And I'm not, I'm talking about the real struggle. Uh, do what, what are your thoughts on the concepts of failure? Do we over glorify or under glorify failure in business? Great question. We're going to address that in a minute. Herbert Chapman, everybody wants to be Arnold. Nobody wants to work out four hours a day. Same thing, same damn thing with making money. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. Let's kind of get with two. Uh, what are your thoughts on concepts of failure? Failure is a good thing because see, this is how I frame failure. And I'll, I'll talk about with some of my businesses. Um, one of them, I'll go way back. Uh, eBay in the beginning wasn't working for us. It wasn't working. I mean, put stuff up. Uh, we went through uh, several, you know, we, we get something hot and then of course it would sell. But one of the things I was taught was to manage your growth, manage your sales. Like we were eBay top heavy. And what does that mean is at one point, 60, 70% of our money was coming from eBay. Sounds good but it's very, very dangerous. That's like, if you have a business and one customer accounts for 75% of your revenue and that customer goes away, you're hurt. You wanna try to have like four or five streams of income and 25% of your income coming from each stream. So if one of them falls off, you still have 75% of your income. Uh, sometimes you can have one client or one customer and it works really, really well because you have a competitive advantage. But we failed with eBay and I failed with Craigslist. I failed with Amazon at one point. There was a process of learning that didn't happen in a day. It didn't happen in a week. It didn't happen in a month. It was, to figure out eBay took us about 18 months the way that we were doing it. Because the, the, the defining moment, and this doesn't work for eBay today, but it worked back then, was I bought a unit, and I put everything that was eBayable for 99 cents. So there was 150 items that all put up in 99 cents, right? Some of them went for 99 cents and I had to ship that shit, right? But a lot of them went for way more. The unit cost me $10, gross sales for over two. I was like, jumping Jehoshaphat. I think we found something. It took us 18 months to get to that point because there was this resistance to not want to let shit go. And there was this... Uh, I'm gonna see to try, I'm gonna see if she's still around because this is what I learned from her. Because I know I'm not crazy to think that I know, let's see, can I find it? Let's see, hold on, buy seller. See if they're still around. This was years ago. I think it was, bam, they're still there. They're not selling on eBay like they used to. 17 results found in all economy. All right, I'm gonna actually show you this. I'm gonna show it to you. And I'm gonna explain the whole lesson to you. I'm gonna explain everything. You see, this isn't hustler porn. This is real hustling. So we can give you explanations. Okay, back in the day, you can see, um, she used to go out and find very high-end clothing and all her auctions started off at 99 cents. Like I said, that does not, don't do that today. You will lose your ass. They, they will wait you out. But back then, this was before eBay instituted Watch It, the Watch It feature, because I saw a big plummet in our sales when they instituted that, because people, it used to be you had to bid on it to keep track of your listings. So they killed it. But back to this, she used to have all of this stuff, and I would track her money. I would sit there, and I look at all the green. She put stuff, I mean, she was doing, you know, 2002, like, four, five, six thousand dollars a week and it went up. I know at one point she was doing about 300 grand. She was like a platinum uh, seller. So apparently, I mean, now this is, she's been on here a long, long time. So I don't know what she's doing and I'm not gonna go looking for it. She could have opened up her own e-commerce store because she's, she's had a lot, but I just sat and watched her and I looked at what she did and I duplicated it and it worked. It really, really worked. It worked very, very well. So that's where I got the ideal to do the 99 cents auctions. And we failed for 18 months. We failed for 18 months. We're still making a lot of money. But see, once we figured that out 
and I started buying units for that purpose. That's why, you know, if you go back to my older videos, uh, full from the ruler to the tutor, because proportionally they were cheaper than smaller units. And we just like load up and list up, you know, three, four, five. I mean, we're, we're doing a lot of shipping, like 2,000 items a month, which is crazy because they're all different sizes, had to create boxes and all those other things. But that came from failing and staying with it. I look at failing as not the result that I want. I don't look at it as an indictment of my personality or who I am as a person or my totality as a person, which some people do. I failed. I ain't shit. Um, part of it is I've had a lot of observations. I've had a lot of critiques. I mean, my books on Amazon, people left, you know, someone from the auction trail and the result, the, the, it's still up there. The review's still up there because I left it alone because the response to the review was so cool. It's like, you just talk, this was someone from the storage auction trail when they found out that I wrote a book and I was telling these stories and on the blog, it was called uh, Sheila Does Atlanta. Ta I mean, it, it, she was pissed. She was pissed. I didn't use her name, but she knew it was her because I called her husband Opie and she went after me, right? But after all of this thing, because the thing is, if you start failing now and get over yourself and don't get all caught up in your feelings, you can get rich because that's where it comes. Because very nobody, the Google guys, their shit didn't come. They, they tried to sell their shit to for like 20 mil. Nobody bought it. I know those people that they tried to sell it to or feel maybe they're not because without the Google guys and going through those failures, it, Google may not be what it is today. So Gates sued by the government. Failure is really, really a good way. If you can manage your failure, you can manage your expectations to make a lot of money because the more tests that you conduct, the more money you're going to make. Uh, Pauline, I started two businesses, both fail, learned a lot, including how to set up a website. I started not one business, not two, that's two, three, four, five businesses that failed. I just didn't give up. And I had people talking about me, I, uh, family members talking shit. And it's like, you need to just go ahead and get a job and stop that because you don't have what it takes. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, who laughs, 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 laughs. I think I think I said that wrong, but you get the gist. Um, my hot dog drug ended up breaking even in the end, but I count that as uh, a fail. No big move on right. Well, I mean, you broke even, so that's not really a fail. All right, Austin, I failed at my first business, but I will learn had a big payback on the back end. Because see, here, here's the thing. You go ahead and you start these businesses and they don't work out. What you're doing is getting something called experience. Experience, let's talk about that. Google, Facebook, Microsoft, all these young people started these companies, right? But it was people 40, 50, 60 years old running that shit. Why? They had experience. It's a different energy to start a company than it is a different energy to manage a company. Very, very different things. Ron, are you still recommending getting in real estate? I run any, okay, we're gonna talk about that. Uh, I don't believe there's such a thing as competition. And I'm gonna explain why in a minute. Families families are, are trip with that. Uh, Irvin, what does breaking even mean? Okay, you spend $50,000 to start a business, right? And you make 100,000, but you make no profit. So you get your original 50 back and then $50,000 to run the business, pay expenses, taxes, whatever. So you didn't make any money, but you didn't lose any money. That's breaking even. There is massive competition for bullshit. Base of the pyramid, like this, right? And then there's the pinnacle. The base is like this, and the pinnacle is like this. So as you move up, I mean, you can become a billionaire being like kind of toward the top in the middle of the pyramid. You don't even have to get to the fucking top. So, but long as you're down here on this base doing what everyone else is doing, doing it the same way that they're doing it, uh, chasing trends and stuff versus creating a brand, yeah, there's a lot of competition for bullshit. But really good, not so much. Great, uh-uh. Awesome, nope. Excellent, nope, uh-uh. There's no competition up there, none. So that's why I don't think there's competition. So if you want to get in real estate and you become the savant of real estate, you will make money. But typically where we are with this is that many people run from failure like they run from hornets. And I don't think you should. You should do something what's called calculated risk. 
um, like say we're spending on ads. If you got a budget for five thousand, you don't spend the whole five thousand immediately. You spend one hundred and fifty, two hundred, and you run a test, and then you take another one hundred and two hundred, and you run another test, then you take another one two hundred and test, and out of those tests, something's going to perform better than the other two, than the ones that don't perform well. You get rid of them, and then you run some more tests until you've got a ad set of stuff that works and makes you money. That's how you do this. But many people want to go into AdSense or their Facebook um, ads manager and put out something that's home run out the park, and it's just not gonna. It's just not gonna happen. Now, and there's competition for keywords. The juicier the keyword, the more expensive it's going to be. And if you were like, you know, King Kong on that and you're willing to go nuclear, and my term for nuclear is like when there was a unit that regardless of how much money I spent on it, I was going to make money, I would go nuclear. There's people who can go nuclear. They got the back end, they got the money, and they can spend 20 bucks per click. And that click makes them $500. They're going to spend it. They gonna spend it all day long. They are gonna try to spend you know as many twenty dollar bills to get those five hundred bills as possible. And there are people who are doing that. There are people who are spending two hundred dollars a click, and they're selling the two to ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar product, and they're making money. So failure is how you go to being a big boy. Because here, here's the thing. Um, let's take these uh, pickup artists on YouTube. A lot of these guys were not really good with women. They kept trying and reading and studying and personal development. And one day, they were able to mack most of the women they wanted. Same guy, different skill sets. Skill sets are of supreme importance. They are uber important. I cannot understate, understate I can't even overstate. I can't overstate how important skill sets are. Yeah, the thing with family, because I got like videos, you know, here was the running joke with my mother. So, hey, mom, I started a business. So what you're really telling me is you still don't have a job. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, that's where, you know, when I come up with tribalism and things like that, uh, typically kids whose parents are entrepreneurs, they don't really say that smackety smack. Unless it's, it's a failed entrepreneur, then they might say that. But typically they don't. I'm doing HIVC in Florida, but don't like it. Was thinking real estate. Okay, here's the big draw to real estate. Everyone likes real estate because you can do one deal and make five or six figures, in some cases, seven figures. And really, you don't do that much work. You really don't once you're good. You know, you can find people to go out and find deals for you if you're at a certain level. But real estate is very much a credit and cash situation. You could probably hustle your way into one to 10 houses and be leveraged like a motherfucker. You can do that. Yeah. Um, but building a business, and I was, this is my recommendation build a business, make a lot of money, then be able to fund your own real estate deals out of pocket. You become incredibly fucking powerful when you can do that. Um, you, you make $150,000 a year that you could throw off on the real estate and buy property every year for the next 10 years. That's a hell of a retirement right there. That 99.5% of the people in this country will never experience. You got 10 houses that owned outright because this is what happens. You pay cash for them, which means if you know how to negotiate, it's like, look, I could talk to my attorney. We can be at the closing table in five days, 10 days, whenever you get your shit together because I got money. So you get a discount. It's like I pay you now. You get let's say that the price of the property is two twenty, but because you're moving fast, it's like would you take uh two twelve? Yeah, losing a little money, but two twelve, two twenty, ain't really a lot of skin off someone's dick. But the house appraises for two thirty. So you go in with equity plus appreciation because you negotiated a good deal because you had cash. Uh, Leroy, I failed at three businesses, learned a lot, especially about resale auctions and logistics and getting products in and out. What's up, MJ Electronics? What's up, Ronnie? Ronnie, Dave Ramsey style. Well, on the real estate thing, I, I'm like that, but I believe in credit. I believe in loans for business, even, you know, against Mark Cuban because, and that's, you know, Mark Cuban, I, I have a great respect for him, but when I listen to the advice they give to people, they're giving advice from where they are now. 
They're not giving advice from where they used to be, which is very different. Steve Jobs did the same thing. Steve Jobs hated the shit he was doing. So the advice he gave later in, in, in years was, was good advice, was not the advice he would have given when he started. So I tend to go a little deeper than that because, like, like I said, I respect Mark, but Mark wouldn't have given that advice when he got started. He wouldn't have because, you know, he took money to start it. He didn't organically fund himself. But, you know, you have to do the history. Irvin, I have a cousin who has twins. Her baby daddy left her for another woman, but my other cousins are complaining that she doesn't have the resources and money to take care of the kids. So I said the solution is for them to put their money together and build a business. Irvin, you were speaking Chinese to Spanish people. Here's the thing with that. These women are not trying to get a job. They're not trying to build a business. They expect due to social narratives that someone, government or some dude's going to give them money and their jobs to raise kids and get paid for it. They ain't trying to start a business, man. They, you know, maybe one or two will wake up and like, shit, I need to start a business because I got this kid to support. But they ain't even thinking like that, dude. Don't even, don't even waste your breath. They're going to look at you like, a real man. You're going to get that talk. Uh, Faman, how often do you watch Shark Tank? Never. Um, this may sound elitist. I'm so busy playing the game of business, I don't have time to watch business as a pastime. If that makes sense. I don't watch Shark Tank, Shark Tank, Shark Tank. I don't watch The Profit. I have built several businesses and none of these were multi-million dollar. Well, some were multi-million, but they weren't multi-billion. They weren't like huge businesses. So I'm operating kind of in a different space that an average person who can follow directions, who can do some mar market segmentations, can create a one to $10 million a year business and have an incredibly great lifestyle. I'm talking about five trips a year, first class to London, uh, college money for your kids and money for retirement. That's very, very fucking attainable. Uh, this like Spanx where you come out with this wonderful product and become a billionaire. Statistically, that shit's ridiculously hard. Statistically, becoming a millionaire is statistically fucking hard. But with the right training and stuff, you can do it. So I operate in totally different areas. Like I said, I, I, I'm actually playing. I'm on the playing field, so I'm not really watching the game. Uh, interested in a new film coming out, Founder Inc., what the, when it hits, uh, which hits the theaters will be good. Uh, what they've done is uh, sexualized or the romance business. They romanced it. That came out with uh, the network about Facebook. What's up, yo yo, Clock eBay? Uh, Douglas Jones, real estate is an enormous amount of work, especially those with, without experience. And make sure you test for toxins in the soil. Uh, for mom, would you ever invest in someone else's business? I have, but I got to know your ass. Like, oh, this looks good. I'm invested in businesses. I knew the people personally. I knew what they were. I knew their families. I knew what kind of people they were. Uh, I don't know if you should buy your first home. That's on you, man. But with failure, as you go through this process, and I've seen it so many times, and I think for me, the big thing came in the gym and learning how to live correctly. Sometimes I have to, like right now, I'm retraining myself. I'm no longer doing the bench press. I, you know, the bench press, I can get real strong on it. It's really nice. But for me, it doesn't give me the development that I want. So I have to take my own advice and stop doing what I like to do. I mean, hey, it's, it's, hey, it's an ego stroke, right? Bam, warm up with 225. Bams, 275 the next set. Three plates. What, what? Oh, yeah, everybody stop and pause. And pause. That's an ego thing. But. It doesn't get me the development as dumbbell presses or, for me, my structure push-ups. And the new workout is overhead presses first, and then I do push-ups until I am twitching and shaking on the floor. I'll get more chest development that I want up in here versus the big boob thing, you know? So that came from, you know, looking at what works and also having goals. Because another reason people fail is they don't have any goals. That whole thing, I'm just trying to make as much money as possible. There is no target. They're just like shotgun. 
Boo. Nah. Boo. Nah. Boo. Versus, you know, 30 all six. Boom. One shot, one kill. There are no targets. Uh, Edward, have you read the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell? Really resonates with your mindset of entrepreneurs. Success stories being more than meets the eye. Uh, yes, I like Malcolm. Malcolm gets a lot of shit from the psychology community because, you know, he's kind of like pop psychology. But yeah, um, billionaires are atypical. Millionaires are atypical. But you would have pe some people around here talking about like millionaires on every corner. They're not. I live in a very nice neighborhood and there's everything you you know you go around it's just nice right but i have the good sense that when i drive 30 minutes outside my neighborhood like i was in Carrollton not too long ago which is home of southwire which is a billion dollar company in georgia and it just changed dramatically you know it just changed so much i mean it was just a different thing because those folks don't make that much money and this isn't like they're good folks or bad folks it's just the reality is that neighborhoods where people don't make a lot of money are radically different from neighborhoods where people do so i have the good sense to realize that everybody's not a millionaire i know the numbers that 51 percent of the people in this country make 30 g's or less a year 51 percent out of 3.340 340 million 50 percent that's 170 million people who don't make 30 that make 30 or less bump it up to 60 70 percent bump it up to 100 g's 95 percent don't make that 95 because see when you boil down by the number not household income which is a way to make people feel about the average household income is 50 thousand household average single person income is not that's why it's 50 because it's like 22 and 28 or 30 and 20 that's what it is yeah i, I like it, malcolm he puts out a lot of good stuff uh, Irvin's calisthenics is good workout i can get great chest development from push-ups and i i kind of forgot that uh, Lawrence, I failed that Amazon is selling books only made ten dollars from three books. Well, just take it back what you learned. Herbert Chapman overhead presses the shit. That shit will make your shoulder superhuman. I can do a rest pause at one eighty five. If I'm cheating, I can do like two oh five. But just like and just like that, that's the limit. And I also learned that I don't need to max out every week. So next workout, I'm probably just going to do one thirty five for sets. Then I'll go put more weight on the next workout. It's, it's this whole system of testing what works and what doesn't work. The power of leverage is powerful in real estate. Money, credit, and reputation can get you a great deal. Yeah. I, I This is something I tell people. You need to get your credit straight. I know there's all these courses out there. You don't need credit. Essentially, you are partnering up with somebody who either has credit or money, which means you're not going to get the max benefit of the deal. I would, me, I would take a smaller deal that I control, learn from that, and work my way to bigger deals. But that's just me. Hey, Florida's a whole different world. That's a lot of wealthy people in Florida. But the thing is, you got to get comfortable with not, and let's, let's kind of change up the the language you got to get comfortable with doing something and not getting the desired result immediately that's really what failure is um my books my first time trying to write i failed the second time i failed but the third time start i started this youtube channel and i started a whole new phase of my life if i had given up i would either be back in resale or i don't know what the fuck i would be doing but this is very fulfilling. I have a lot of fun. I enjoy the people I work with. And there's a lot of value in that because I remember the days of having a job I hated. I remember the days of hitting the alarm clock two and three times because I didn't want to get up. I don't even need an alarm clock to get up because I love what I do so much. So from the happiness point, I'm wealthy as fuck. But typically, you know, a lot of people don't really look at it like that. How to increase Google searchability should I hire an SEO specialist? Okay, here's the biggest thing you need to do. 
you need to create a brand. Forget about gaming Google. Create a brand. Create, and this is going to be that you're going to have to invest more into it because a lot of search engine stuff is trends, and there are people who've made millions and millions of dollars from trends. But it's like this I had a friend, oh, do a lunch, make 60, make 100 grand, then have to wait six months to hit the list again. And it was just, he spent too much, he got in trouble because he didn't have, see, this is my thing. I am a big fan of consistent income, monthly income from your internet business. The launch model is great. I don't like it and I don't really do it much. And I've done it a few times and I had great results, but the launch thing is, it's like a startup. You're doing a lot of work, you're doing a lot of little tests, you're building stuff up, you're building stuff up for weeks or months and you're not making any money. I like making money every week, but that's just me. So build a brand. Build a brand, build a community, and you can kind of chill from the things with Google. I mean, it's still important. So it's just the thing, because so many people, they will not start because they think that they're going to fail. There are people who watch this channel for eight years who they love the message, they love the videos, they've not taken one lick of action in eight years. Eight years. Explain something for me, Glenda. How does foreign men from Morocco get money for stores and keep open stores over again? Do they have to pay that money back? They have investors. Okay, here's the thing with immigrants. And this is one of the things that uh, I learned from watching my Latino, my Hispanic helpers. I started working like a Mexican. And I'm not trying to be offensive for, for somebody who, with their little pink panties, gets all twisted. I saw that these guys would... I go pick them up, Home Depot, and it's cold. And they're out there, and then when they got a job, they went at it. They went at it. They went at it. And I was like, you know, I need to start working like that versus going, oh, wait, these Mexicans sure work hard. <laughs> I started working like an immigrant. Um, part of their thing is back home, they're really poor. They're really extended, belly poor, uh, no running water poor. They're fucking poor. Here, they laugh at people talking about their poor. It's like, you got a house, you got TV, you eat out. You're not fucking poor. But you say that, then it's like, we all struggle at our own levels and all other namby-pamby shit. But uh, typically, they, they have a lot of trust. They have families, and they'll pool their money together. Purpose pit, uh, those are the chumps. <laughs> I'm considering a service-based business where clients can pay via monthly subscriptions. Any recommendations? Once again, do your own work. See, one of the things that I know to be a problem with hustler porn is, let's see, um, I don't have anything, yeah. All right, here's this cup, right? You're told that this cup is a system or a product and it works for everybody. So the system works, right? And then everybody gets this cup. Then what happens is it stops working. By figuring out your unique proprietary angle and what you're trying to do, you can literally carve money out of the economy for yourself. Your systems are great, but building your own thing, Amazon, let's look at Amazon. Amazon had to build their own web services because they couldn't find anyone to do what they want done. So they built it and they sell the, you know, Amazon Web Services is a billion dollar company by itself. Um, Prime, uh, we can't find anyone to do it. Let's do Prime, billion dollar company by itself. Amazon Fulfillment, well, we want stuff shipped a certain way and no one can do it. We're going to build our own. All three of those parts of Amazon are multi billion dollar companies if they were spun off. So there is value with building your own shit. Now it took Amazon, Amazon took many hits and it was a butt of jokes for years and years and years. Now everybody's like, oh, Amazon. I'm going to kiss your ass. I, I remember reading the press clips and the stock reports and watching analysts don't just talk shit about Amazon. But now they're like, oh, my God, you know, Amazon making the nipples hard. Uh, for Mung, 
Would you ever take investors for any new business ideas you have? No. I, this, this is the whole thing. I've been studying business since high school, reading Inc. Magazine. I had a subscription to Inc. Magazine when I was 16 years old. So I have studied a lot of stuff, and I look at the market because it's fun to me. And you know, you, you if you go ahead, and let's just say you build your service business, and you build some unique angle, like there's this thing, um, I forget the name of it, but they're on these trucks, and they just drive around, and they sell you gas. The gas, the gas company comes to you. It's like you're at work, you need to fill up, hit them up, they come fill your tank up. You don't have to go to the gas station. Now, why is that important? How many people, how many of your friends, maybe you, who run around on fumes because they don't want to go to the gas station? So every time you need to fill, fill up, somebody's like gonna come to you, and it's roughly the same cost of going to the gas station. That's a no-brainer. What's up, David? Yeah, Ronnie, just do do it. Do it. Amazon's working and creating their own mailing systems, possible drones. Okay. I got a drone for Christmas. Let me tell you what you got to do for a drone. You got to fill out a form with the government, and drones cannot fly over the city. They can't fly over the city. So that, that little wrinkle that, you know, because they're putting it out there because a lot of people, have, there's this information asymmetry. Most folks don't know all drones should file their form with the government and they can't fly over cities. So if you live in the city and they have a drone and they can't fly over the drone, this, how are they going to deliver it to you? I'm just saying. Broderick, I lived with three Mexicans for about a year. I got laughed at for staying in a one bedroom with them, but I learned so much. They laughed at my work ethic. Yeah, they be having hustle competitions. They very much about that machismo, working hard. What up, Pharaoh? No, that's all drones. Um, I got a guy, I don't have his card because we talked about it. He does aerial photography for, uh, he did some for the Hawks and stuff. You cannot fly drones over the city. That's all of them. It's any drone. Like if you got like one of those little small ones and you don't take it over the traffic, probably. But Amazon's drones, they're gonna be. You just. It's, I don't see it unless they change the rules. Now nah, ain't no it ain't about attitude. The guy we talked. He was like, you cannot. You fly a drone over the city. It crashes. It's a lot of pro. If you get caught. You fly the drone. You, you fly your drone over the city, and they don't know who you are. Some countries have birds to attack drones. They've caused a lot of problems. A drone drops in the middle of Peachtree Road while there's a bunch of traffic. Someone could get killed. I can understand why. That's why I'm like, I don't think this is gonna work. What's up, Turman? Uh, we're thinking about adding that to our real estate listing photography business. You can fly a drone over your house or a house, but like you've got this, you know, do some research. Just do some research because like I did, because uh, I know someone that wanted to do the aerial photography and stuff and ask yourself, when you see people flying drones and stuff, how many of them are over the city? They're like maybe over a nice house, but how many drones do you see going over like buildings like New York? You see people in helicopters and planes, but you don't see drones. What's up, Will? FAA <laughs> is a beast. I'm just, I'm just telling you what I was told and what I'm going to, how I'm going to govern myself with this thing with these drones. But let's see, where are we? All right, cool, 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 cool. But yeah, you know, Apple, Hewitt Packard. Google, these started in garages. They started in garages. So it's just that that whole thing of because one of the things with hustle porn that I see is you're gonna get big really quick or you can make a lot of money real quick. And like I said, I got people on my Facebook page and I see all of these things about uh, payouts and you know, I had my first year, my my second year really, my second year in my commercial office business, I did 1.2 million. But there were so many fees, there were so many fuck ups. I only netted out like 35, 40 years. 
So when I hear all that stuff, yeah, we did that. I'm like, what's the net, motherfucker? And then a lot of them get real upset when you ask them that question because any of you, if you had the money, you could get a million dollars in sales per month by underpricing the item and flooding the market and running on raising thin margins and make money. If you had money, you could play that game. You got 10 mil in the bank and you got two mil that you can let chill for 30, 60 days. Oh, you could take over sectors. But who has that kind of money? Most people don't. Then not only do you have to have the money, then you have to have the expertise, then you have to have the logistics, then all this other stuff. That's why when I see this stuff, I'm just sitting there I'm like, okay. And mark my words, a lot of these folks who are doing Amazon, they're going to be looking for something else to do in five years because that's all they know how to do. They know how to operate on Amazon's platform. They know how to please Amazon. There's value in that, but they don't know how to do their own shit. I can sell books without Amazon. I can't, can I sell as many books without Amazon? We, we'll, we'll find out. But the thing is, when I sell an ebook for 10 bucks, I get 99, I get $9 and 70 some cents. Uh, also, I get the customer's email. Also, I can build a relationship with the customer. I can't do that on Amazon. So now, you know, when I do um, uncivilized profits, because like I said, it's in beta mode, I'm going to be doing more. And then there's some things we're going to be doing with Amazon. It's a test. It's a test, but I think it's going to be hot. Edward, no, it ain't happening, Edward. No, it's not happening. MX Celix, your show's always a real pleasure. Well, thanks. What's up, Roosevelt? We have eagles at the airport for that purpose, anti drone. Like I said, there's, there's a lot to this thing. Uh, purpose fit. How can you get your metrics on similar webs? My website doesn't show up. Your web isn't showing up because it's not. It's either new or doesn't get a lot of traffic. Uh, if your website is brand new, it probably will not show up in similar web. If your website doesn't get past like three thousand hits a month, it probably won't show up. Kind of gives you the, the threshold. But building businesses and building brands is hard work and it's supposed to be hard. But if you can love to learn, if you can love to love the journey of it, then you're building something and it takes time and you're making money, but you're also having fun. Because we're getting ready to do some stuff this year. I'm so glad I started a website versus Etsy being with Etsy since 2009. I'm learning a lot. Totally different beast. Damn, so much different. Yeah, it's very different, Rugged. Very different. Because here's the thing. When you operate on the platform, let's take YouTube. Okay. Um, do you think I want to do these streams? I'll be honest. No, I'm enjoying them now because, you know, I got folks coming in talking smack. Sometimes you have really good, interesting uh, conversations in the in the chat room. Did I want to do this? Hmm. YouTube changed the game. So YouTube changed the game. I had to change my behavior. I did what I needed to do to keep this going because there's value, but that was not my cup of tea. That's not what I wanted to do. So platforms make you change your business plan. Now, fortunately for me, YouTube is not like, I mean, it, it's really interesting because YouTube direct money from um, AdSense, Anywhere from a few hundred bucks a month to maybe twelve hundred. I mean, highest this month this year was sixteen hundred. But I make more money from the books under the under the videos. I make more money from that, and that's totally passive because I don't do anything. It, it fulfills itself. And then the bigger clients I get from the channel. So there's a lot of value, but platforms make you. And then you know, I, I really had to have a conversation with myself because. I was kind of heading down that road to become a YouTube platform specialist, but my goal was to make money and which thing made me more money. And that's why, you know, I kind of dial down a lot of stuff because everybody doesn't want to write books. Lesson learned. Everybody doesn't want to do YouTube, but everybody wants to make money. And if you can start a business, put proper structures, proper protocols in it to the point where you don't have to go into the office and you get checks. That's exciting. And I'm really good at that. 
I cannot tell you my best client success secrets because they they were like, uh uh, we don't want that out there. We don't want our competitors to know about you. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, Uncle G, Avery Brown went through the Never Be Broke Action course and $25 hustle. Fucking fantastic. Highly recommended for everyone. Appreciate it. Yeah, because, you know, Hustlers Kung Fu is all about making that money without a job. And typically, you have to, in my opinion, start some kind of business or get income outside of a job to really get wealthy in America. Uh, there's a few people who can get wealthy with a job. You know, you're a CEO with a million dollar income and you know five million a year in stock options yeah you can get wealthy with a job but how many of those jobs are there like that out there not even one percent of the workforce it's like point something percent of the workforce that level of money so or you create your own company and then make yourself ceo that works does experience make a good book hell yes Broder, I'm starting to love outsourcing, like really love it. You get to use other people's talents. You're becoming a manager. Uh, Purpose Fit, you have a course on how to set up proper business systems. Ask a better question there. What do you mean by proper business systems? You know, be more specific. You know, what are you looking to do? So I'm going to keep this one short. Uh, what y'all know now that I've re rescued the channel, Avery Brown, I was cracking up when you were talking about getting rid of the make do mentality, the ham hocks in the pot to eat for a week, death to the stroke. Yeah, that whole, I I'm going to tell you a little story. Years ago, when I was a part of the Matrix, I was an employee. I worked overtime hours. I did all of this stuff. That was a matrix because, you know, in my mind, the only way that I can make more money, even though I had studied business, was for me. You know, I thought business for, for these other people, these fancy people that I was kind of like romanticizing. I didn't really think I could become one, which took me so long to actually get in the seat of the saddle. But I go buy this car, um, not South Lake, um, Union City. I think it was Union City Nissan. So I'm there talking and, you know, my ratios were all out of whack. At the time, I didn't even understand that. I just knew that my credit wasn't where it needed to be. And then talk to the salesman. And he's like, well, you know, we black. That's how we do. Put them ham hocks and greens in the pot. Eat all week, you know. And dude was trying to talk me into like an outrageous car payment. I mean, it was, it was like, whoa. And I just walked. I wanted that car, but I walked. But that, that mentality was like, you know, I left and I said, Someday in my life, I'm going to be able to pay cash for a car. Fuck this. And that's what I've been able to do. It took me a while to get there, but that feeling, you wanting some, you can't do it, you're shit raggedy, and nobody, and, every, and the thing is, one of the reasons my shit was raggedy was virtually my circle. Everybody was on the same raggedy shit. There was a few people who were not as raggedy as I was, but we were all very close. I was talking to a friend the other day, and uh, his mother-in-law, who I know, really great woman, when his first son was born, they put a million dollars in a trust fund from the, the day he was born. Millie in the trust fund. Day he was born. So the day he was born, and he's a little black kid too, just put that out there, because I know people are like, oh. He was a millionaire the day he was born. Think about that. I was just like, cause I, I didn't know that they, they did that, but I know they had the money to do it. And I was just like, that's what's up. He was a millionaire the day he was born. You can't, that's just, I got goosebumps because there, there needs to be more of that versus all this fucking hustler porn. Looking to sell daily digital property, best membership program from website. I don't know because I'm getting away from the membership stuff. I've had, you know, uh, maybe what, the, what is it? Member Miles? I think that's good. Uh, Louis the Seller. What's up, dude? I'm finally building my own website and I can already sense the freedom not totally run on platform. I won't be launching it until I learn everything about marketing. I thank you. Good deal. Issy. I like that. Hustle porn equals immediate gratification. 
Avery, that raggedy shit got to go while there was a hustler porn, the great emphasis of a struggle porn. I'm also killing it with Uber. Uber has changed because, you know, I, 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 can, I use Uber quite a bit and it's gone up. I was sitting there like, that was different. And I see a lot of drivers really like it because one last Uber driver I had, he said he quit his job to do Uber full time. He said it was he said he was making twice the money and working about 10 hours a week less. I mean, that's that's twice the money, even if he was working the same. He said, and he said, he, he emphasized, I'm working 10 hours a week less. So he's all in there. Uh, only I keep reminding myself it's not supposed to be easy. You hit the head and the nail. Most people just take can't take the pressure. Uh, I would say that's true. Heard about heard you talk about the power of your subconscious mind two weeks ago. Got the book and my life and opportunities have gotten better and become available. Let me tell you about the power of your subconscious mind and what it really is. Most of the time, you're thinking you can't do it because we were groomed that way. If you live in America, you're groomed that way that you can't do it unless you're credentials. You can't do it unless you have a degree. You can't do it unless you're Jewish. You can't do it unless you're Chinese or, or this type of stuff. There's a fucked up book called Marriage is for White People. It's on Amazon. I was just like, marriage is really for people of means because, you know, two broke people getting together leaves more broke people in the room. But once you start to accept that, yeah, I can do that. It starts to happen and it just kind of blows your mind. And I should warn you for the folks who are getting the power of subconscious mind, you start doing that stuff. You're going to feel somewhat like a fraud in the beginning because shit's going to get easier. You're, you're, I mean, it's, it's almost like I'm being conflicting here, but it's still going to be hard. But it's like you see opportunities that have been there all the time, but you never saw them before. That's what the power of subconscious mind did to me because I was just like, damn. It was like that. Yeah, it was like that. So you're just not taught that you're good enough. You're not taught that you're great enough. You don't hit, you don't get those attaboys. If you come from a dysfunctional family, no one may have even told you I'm proud of you. There's a lot of people walking around here who someone has never said I'm proud of you in their whole fucking life. I'm serious. I mean, it's it's really fucked up, but there are people walking around. Uh, there are people where someone that they respect have ne never said good job. They've never heard that. This is one of the reasons that a lot of these players are really good, you know, close to their coaches because their coaches are their fathers. And for the girls who play certain sport, the coaches are their fathers and mothers. Really, because this is the only place they get that type of validation for performing and succeeding. My parents did something for me instead of cash. They put in to stop it, man. Stop it. What's up, Eric? Ion Monzua Savage. What's up? Uh, Lyft has his own fan base. They're not as big as Uber. Nope, no local meetups again. I got I got some big clients that take up all my time, so I'm not doing that. On divine purpose, you got me thinking bigger. I realized from watching you that I need to revamp my business plans and goals. Thinking long term, big money goals now. Congratulations. I want to learn everything about marketing before I launch. No, 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 no. Launch and learn on, you know, this website is like a digital build your wings on the way down because you're not really going to physically crash. So launch your website and start doing all that stuff at the same time because you're going to need to have some things to test. So you can be learning, but you're not, you need to be learning and doing. Cool. I got the hundred dollar startup book. It's a good book. Sure thing, conference on studio. Yeah, I mean the, the, the whole thing with the hustle for I I got seduced by that stuff when I was a kid. I used to order that bullshit out of the back of magazines before the internet was, you know, the internet. And it just didn't work because they fed me my they fed me hustler porn. And instead of me thinking, how many people can I serve? 
What kind of brand could I build? How can I make this great? How can I train employees? The real stuff that makes money, it was just like, I'm going to do this system. I'm going to spend 39 and I'm going to have me a Ferrari in three months. I was so stupid. Oh, my God, that was so stupid. But I was young. I was young, so... Uh, Will Smithson, why do my friends and families think that if you pay money for anything better yourself, it must be a scam? Um, to not support your family, sometimes these things are scams, but the reality is people cannot understand, accept, or encourage things that they don't like or are afraid of. So I got clients paying me big money. I mean, eye-popping money, right? And some people will hear the sums and like, oh, Glenn ain't worth that. He ain't worth that. What the fuck is he doing? But there are other people who know the real deal and they hear that like, damn, that's a deal. So it's really about your environment. It's about the people in your environment because let's say I charge a client a million dollars, right? The upside is that will help them build a business that will make millions year after year after year. So they they pay me a million and then they got a business that uh, in its life cycle does 30 million dollars ah that's cheap that's cheap <laughs> that's real cheap because one of the things and let's go back to my five businesses that i failed every business that i've had i've always learned something new and i've got this thing now where i can look at the business model i can look at i i mean get down to Oh, the bubble gum is two cents. How can we make more money with the bubble gum? You know, take the analysis to that level. Plus, I know how to use video marketing. There's not a lot of people with these skill sets in one body. It's just not. Uh, a lot of the video marketing guys, because I, I went to a conference, and video marketing guys are really, really good with video marketing. And the paid uh, traffic guys are really, really good with paid traffic. But someone who can, you know, accurately create a business model and embed the marketing into the business model and then do the paid traffic and the video marketing. The money is insane. And I know this because I'll tell you in the heydays of us making money, A to Z, making money with self storage unit A to Z, I wake up two, three, four, five grand in my merchant account every fucking day, seven days a week. Why video marketing? That's did it. It was nothing else. I wouldn't do any paid traffic. Uh, I didn't really do shit on Facebook. I learned early on that marketing my business on Facebook to my friends was a waste of time. Uh, I, like now, you, you, if you're my Facebook friends, you're going to see bullshit most of the time. Like, you know, oh, the bison thing wasn't bullshit. That, I thought that was helpful. You'll see me doing jokey stuff because, and every now and then I'll put some up about business. Uh, I'm not creating a Facebook page for this thing. I don't really see the value. I don't see the value in Facebook likes. I see the value in talking to you, having some people every day. I put out, hey, get the never broke action pack, which is under the video. Oh, two, you know, two people buy, that's 300. 10 people buy, that's 1,500 bucks. Just like that. Or I can go play in Facebook and, oh, yeah, I'm posting every two hours to keep the Facebook guys real happy. So they will marginally show me 5% more to people who've already liked the page. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm not doing it. I'm just not. But see, when you know better, you can do better. I'm, I'm not playing that game because it works for Facebook. And there's some people, don't get me wrong, who've made a lot of money with Facebook. But I'm just choosing not to use it. Um, there's some other stuff that's coming. But I'm not doing that for Hustlers Kung Fu. Let's see. Let's see. Whoa. You can always get a car with Uber if you want to do that. How do you influence positivity and open-minded creativity with your team? And how do you get them to step their, their skill set up without offending them? It's called hiring correctly. Hire the, hire the right people first. You can't change a grown person. They have to change themselves. I don't want to impose my beliefs and work efforts on them, but if I try to lead by example, can you give me some actionable steps I can implement? Number one, hire the right people. These are people with good personalities. They're what's called service-oriented. It's like they like helping people. A lot of people who are service-oriented become 
doctors, nurses, attorneys, um, clerks. These are folks who like to be helpful. You ever have a girlfriend who's like, every time you turn around, like, can I do this for you? Can I do this for you? They like to do stuff for people. That's who you want to hire, people like that. Um, then you create real training programs. It, but it all starts with, I mean, it's like football. It's like basketball. Like, all right, Roll Tide, University of Alabama. Why do they win? They get more five-star recruits than anybody else. I mean, you can have the best coaching, but if you don't have, as the late, great Beano Smith said, Beano Cook said, if you don't have the right material, you know, he was talking about Notre Dame. He's like, well, Notre Dame doesn't have the material. You got great coaches and the best players? What, what? <laughs> so hire, you know, work on hiring. That's going to be the biggest thing. Uh, what, do you, what does encouragement change in a person's mindset? Typically, especially with children, um, if you've got kids, you should never say you're a fucked up kid. I wish I never had you. I've heard people say that to their kids. That does not create a good kid or a good person. And this shit will, you know, the stuff that happens to you and your kids, and this is why personal development is really, really important. That shit doesn't go away because you're no longer six. You got people out there like what I call it, the, the, the late blooming host syndrome. Uh, you'll get a girl who never got the attention from her father in high school, plain Jane. Then she went out in career, did well, got herself some money, got herself, a fit, you know, doing Pilates and, you know, boxing and stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, she's fly as fuck. She's trying to recapture that shit she never got when she was that age. You see it all the time. Dudes like, you know, guys who went to college, you see the guy. You could always tell a little guy that was nothing that after he crossed lines. Hardest motherfucker on the yard, right? But before he crossed, he was a little punk. <laughs> you see this stuff all over and over again. So encouragement is very, very important. So uh, if you're married, you know it's important to tell your mate, "Good job. I'm proud of you." That shit right there it keeps people happy. Uh, did you? Oh, I predicted that, Avery. I predicted that. I said that was going to happen in my no eBay, no Amazon videos. I said that several times. Oh, they've been doing it for years. They've been doing it for years. Uh, how can you tell if something is or isn't a scam? Kind of go back early in the video when I start talking about they, they, you know, steps. They actually tell you what it is. Amazon is buying American Apparel to appease Trump. Well, American Apparel, Google this. The motherfucker who started, I mean, he was a mother. This dude used to masturbate in front of reporters. He'd just take his pants off. And, like, and if one reporter, he's like, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to let him freak me out. I'm a professional. He's over there beating off. Just Google the founder of American Apparel. That's going to be a movie someday. I know it because he's a wild one. I guess the blue collar. Nope, don't watch that. I don't really watch a lot. You know what I do? Um, we don't have cable around here, right? We got Netflix, Amazon TV, and typically we watch movies or like right now, I am watching The House of Lies. M Marty Kant, that show, that is one of the best written shows I've ever seen because the episodes go so, so fast. It's like, wait a minute, it's over? And there's like five seasons, so we're on season two. That's what I do. I don't really watch a lot of regular television unless it's a football game. Um, Ron, I will be launching my 18-month project before January 31st. It was a crazy grind. I had to tune, tune people out, including my own mother. When you start creating a business or doing something different, or just say you take up a hobby that you become very committed to, if you have people who are in your circle who have never done anything like that, the hate's going to start or, you know, one or two will really support you. They may even join you because they're so inspired, but the hate's going to start because what you're doing is you're breaking tradition. You, this tribalism is no joke. Tribalism is keeping people poor. It's like, well, you know, we were all garbage collectors and nothing wrong being a garbage collector. Don't lose your fucking boxers. But you got people out there who are garbage collectors who could be mathematicians. And that kind of goes back earlier to the point of encouragement. Um, when I was in my first job at Rent a Crate, I didn't know commercial office broker uh, commercial office brokers made like five hundred grand a year. You don't know what you don't know, and so if you have someone who doesn't encourage you, there's this very natural instinct to protect your underbelly and not to take risks. So 
you can be perfectly capable from an intellectual standpoint of doing anything, but because your self uh, self esteem is low, because you haven't been exposed, you haven't had encouragement, you're working like a Walmart. Seriously, this happens all the time. So encouragement is very important. The internet and technology is changing the world. I'm 49. Sometimes I wish 20 years younger. How about you, Glenda? Do you wish you were younger? I got lucky, Louie. I got on this track when I was 32. So, mm, no, I actually, no, I don't really wish I was younger. But see, I went through the bullshit that some of you were going through for years ago with the, with the family and other people. Uh, in the boarding house, I had two friends who came to visit me when I was at two out of my crew, two. So I've been on this path since 32. So that's a little different because, you know, I would say to someone, because I'm 50, so, you know, I'm a little older than you, but I would say to anyone at any point, because at 32, I felt like it was too late. I was like, oh, God, you know, I'm working this job and all the account reps are like right out of college. I'm 32. I am like seven. Let's say there's like 22, 23. So I'm like seven to damn near 10 years older than everyone that I'm working with. And it felt odd, man. It felt odd. But the thing is, it's like, fuck it, I'm going to perform. I'm here to win. I think at any age you can make that decision. You're like, I'm here to win. So, Lamo has finished the 10 essential steps of hustling, taking action now. Great course. Thank you. Eric Danrich, I do with experience. I got in business so I could have uh, be well off by my 40s. Um, if you start a business when you're in your 20s and you keep at it, you'll be a millionaire for real, for real in your 40s or 50s. Uh, mommy motivation so true I totally pulled back from Facebook now I doubled up on building blog pages and YouTube video production I don't like Mark Zuckerberg's least terms I have a page video marketing they unpublished it because I wasn't posting on it they unpublished I, I mean I could post and put it back up but I was like they sent me it's like we're gonna unpublish it because you you ain't keeping you ain't helping us man so we don't have room for you in our servers motherfucker Uh, the internet's changed the world. I wish I was 20 years younger so I could work with them and be well in my 40s. Well, for Louie and Eric, here's the thing. You guys have something that someone who's 22. Remember what I said in the earlier stream? Facebook was started by Zuckerberg, but Sheryl Sandberg, her ass is 40 some. All these folks who are really running these companies, they're 40 some. So you got something called experience. And if you can bring your technical skills up, you can actually move faster than they can. Terran, in Europe, e-commerce is really booming, but there's a lot of sites hard to come with some creative competition is fierce, man. Competition for cheap bullshit is fierce. Competition for cheap bullshit is fierce. Competition for cheap bullshit is fierce. You up if you can move your price points to you're selling hundred dollar items, you will see there's just not as much competition out there. Uh, GTW, I was the girl who heard those things. I'm really sorry. That's very misfortunate because I've seen mothers talk to their kids like that and I just want to slap the shit out of them because it creates a very nasty chain of events. Film on. There's a lot of people who shouldn't have kids if there was... I mean, seriously, that's just truth. That's just truth. Uh, Mark and Veli, what do you think about... I think virtual reality will be big. I don't think we're there yet. Mike Page, how do you hustle, build a biz, and learn all the technical video blocking at the same time? Every day you have a list that you work off of. You put down on that list what you need to do, you rank it in order of importance, and you keep doing it. That's how you do it. Yeah, VR is booming for video games, but um, anybody see Civil War, you know, the Iron Man, the... Uh, the Avengers movie, like when it opens and he is in there thing with his parents, like the holodeck, Star Trek holodeck, that VR is going to be hot. And this is why, and this is going to be the number of reason you can create, there's going to be two things. There's going to be uh, robots. There will be animation. There'll be robots. And there'll be this animation that you can fuck whoever you want. So if you want to fuck Mother Teresa, Catholics, don't lose your mind. This is an example. I'm not saying this. You can have that program create a cover of Mother Teresa. 
You see a porn star, you want to bang a porn star, doo -doo -doo, bam, you're banging the porn star in your virtual reality room. When that shit happens, society will change because a lot of people will never leave their fucking house. They will not leave. Uber delivers, Uber Eats delivers, Amazon delivers. You can fuck whatever you want on your automatic, you know, your animation doll. Some people are just not going to leave the house. <laughs> it's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. You're so hilarious. Oh, there's more, Devon. There's more. Feral Phoenix, your emotional IQ is high, which will help you develop those skills. I actually told someone that the other day because when I used to work for the Gallup organization years ago, they make you take a test, and the guy who was interviewing me saying and it was called audiency. Adiency or audiency, I forget the term. He says, I have never seen an audience score this high, and I've been doing this five years. So I can I can read people really well. And there was, you know, this is kind of with the tribalism. There was a way that I was brought up which urged me not to treat people the way that I needed to treat them in a particular situation because everybody doesn't want to be treated the same way. It's real funny, but when I started to read people and treat them the way that I thought they needed to be treated, success, success. Uh, here's another little story for uh, Divine. I was on the sales call, and it was this lady. She was uh, the one that I was trying to make the sale to. She was the uh, lead on the project, and I sensed she was troubled. And let me describe her. Red head. Green eyes, 5'2", maybe 130 if that. And we were talking, and she just kind of like paused, right? And, you you know, there was this thing that crossed across her face, and then she kind of straightened herself up. And I was like, what's wrong? She said, no, let's do I was like, I got time. You're my last appointment. Let's talk about it. And she just like, well, no, it's not professional. Then I got up. Now, I've done a lot of shit, and I'm not urging you to do this. I'm not urging you to do this. This was me. So I got up and I said, stand up. She's like, what? And I grabbed her hand, stand up, gave her a big hug. It'll be okay. Whatever it is, it'll be okay. Start crying. Her and her husband was having problems. I went to the bathroom, got her some tissue, sat there, looked at her. We talked it out. Of course I got the deal. <laughs> but we, we never talked about um, the furniture anymore after that. Got the deal, and every time I saw her, she talked about that because she had no one she could talk to about it. I mean, it, it's a trip. So if I had treated her like I was supposed to, which was like, well, apparently you're having a moment here. Let's reschedule. I never would have made that deal. And I was telling another client, I had to help out another client recently, which is a hilarious story, which I cannot tell you, but it's just funny. Vikings, hadn't seen it yet, but I'll check it out. Do you think if you launched your pet owner, pet photography business in 2007, would it take off? I think it would make money, but it wouldn't make the kind of money I want to, so I wouldn't touch it. Uh, the life for it. Glenda, do you think businesses fail because of the lack of money or knowledge? Knowledge. You got knowledge, you can get money. Knowledge. You got enough knowledge, you can get money. I've heard, hire the personality, train the skill, pretty much. You get somebody with a nasty attitude, all they're going to do is alienate people. Oh shit, I'm 31 to get in my mind right and I'm about to kill it. Nope, you're never too old to do anything. Uh, Mark Valley, if I come out of college as an engineer at late 21, early 22, and want to start my own business, what tips do I have? First tip, start your business now, part time. Which means if that means you can't party as much, then you don't fucking party. Start your business right now. First tip. Yeah, I've heard a lot of stuff about Facebook jail. Like I said, I don't do anything on Facebook. I don't have a Facebook page. And on my, first, on my profile page, it's about to get funny as hell. Total Recall. What's Total Recall? Irvin, uh, Total Recall, what are you talking about? The movie? Age Free 2? What the hell? <laughs> what are y'all talking about? No, I'm going to get beat down for this, but if it's wrong, if I put my business before my girlfriend and her daughter, hey, your business is yours. They ain't. That's all I got to say on that. 
What will insurance companies do less accidents? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. All right. All right. All right. The uh, kinky animation doll. I get y'all. I get y'all. How can I develop those skills to raise my emotional IQ? First thing you should do is meditate, which I know it's going to sound really crazy. Go somewhere and learn how to do transcendental meditation. After you learn to do transcendental, transcendental meditation, then you go find some monks. I'm not kidding. Find some Buddhist monks. Hang Because this is the thing. If you can find some and talk to them from a really honest place, they'll talk to you and just say, I've learned transcendental meditation, and I want to learn how you guys meditate. They'll, they'll be happy to train your ass. So if you can find some or Buddhist temple and get into that stuff, because to meditate, and I'm going to kind of give you the whole thing of how it happens. My first time meditating, I passed out. It was all that stress releasing, right? Then the second time, and I got into some deep stuff where I was meditating for an hour, and there was this magazine. Matter of fact, for you guys who like the guard type stuff, Let's see. I'm going to tell you where I learned about T Reader. For the people who are like, and this magazine is for creative, spiritual, earthy types. All right. If it shows up, here we go. And all right. I don't know why I say, oh, well, I'm streaming, but it's called UT Reader. There we go. Years and years ago, I was meditating and I used to work in Sky Fright Children's uh, Emergency Room, right? And there was this doctor, Dr. Linda Settle. She used to bring these magazines, OT Reader, and I like read them all the time. And it was like a really cool stuff. Um, it's very, if you're a creative type, you're going to love this magazine if you're a creative type. So there was this article about this Buddhist monk who was a writer and lifted weights. You know, I was very, very interested, right? So if he ever had writer's block, he would meditate and he would write for three hours straight. And I was like, well, I'll try it. And that was because I was meditating. And well, actually, I read the story before I started meditating because I went back to it because I wasn't working at the hospital. And then I started meditating and I found out that if I ever had issues writing, I could do a 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 session of meditation. Boom. I could write my ass off. So I never had I never get creativity blocked because of this. So this is where the emotional IQ came from, because as you get in touch with you and you get in touch with your bullshit, it's very easy for you to accept, observe and handle the bullshit of other people because you'll see someone freak out. But because when you have a greater level of emotional intelligence or empathy, you'll know you'll have a sense that they're not freaking out because they're crazy. They're freaking out because they're scared or they're freaking out because something's wrong. Like the lady. I mean, I saw it and I didn't know what the hell it was. And, you know, her and her husband were just like going at it. And it was like, you know, she, the, the job was really stressful. And yes, if I wanted to fuck her, I could. But I was married. No, I wasn't married. But I had a girl at the time. I could have. And there's something else, too. And this is a lesson in power. For you to have power, you must have responsibility because if you don't have responsibility, you will not have power. And, you know, we became friends. And I think we became friends because she knew she could trust me because she we talked about it. She said, you knew I was vulnerable and I would have. And I say, yeah, I knew that. But, you know, I figured I'd keep you around forever. She just smiled. But typically. It's a lot the more responsible you are with power, the more power you'll get. The less responsible you are with power, the less power you will have. So you just can't get power and go fucking crazy. It typically doesn't end well. So let's come out of there. But yeah, I left that up there so y'all can get into that. Um, Tamron, there's an get on the live. Don't miss the shows. There's an email list that's right under the show. I mean, under the video, get on that list and I send it out 30 minutes to an hour before I do a stream. Streams are usually Monday through Friday sometime in the morning. Jay Nerd, how do you bounce back from burnout? Meditation, working out, taking care of yourself. Edward Lewis, yep, Ray Dalio, founder of Biggest Hedge Fund in the World, says meditation is his number one key to success. Really? I didn't know. I mean, it's powerful stuff. I recommend it highly. Shoe 458, what? Let's look at this corny shit. You know, if it's look, Bill Gates, 
learned how to do meditation in high school. Let me say that again. Bill Gates learned how to do meditation in his private high school. What's up, Eric? Uh, that I don't know, Life Warrior. The title of the stream makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing that I'm doing. I'm doing the streams so when I'm breaking away from normal SE, SEO because I was getting bored. This is way more fun. Uh, of divine purpose. Meditation does wonders. I love it. On my end, in my level of meditation skills, intermediate ideas start flowing like water. Yes. Visualization of business is outrageous. Stress release is tremendous. Uh, now, I'm going to give you the double whammy here. If you do transcendental meditation and you work out in the same day, your blood pressure will go down if you have high blood pressure or it will normalize. Or it'll go low. It'll go super low. I remember having a physical. And this is when I was, and I'm getting back to that whole mode. That's when I'm changing my workout. And the, the doctor was like, are you a runner? Because I was huge, right? Because he was, he was looking at me like someone encouraged. It's like, your post is like 55. But he's looking at me. He's like, you don't look like a runner. I said, I don't run. I knew what it was. I said, I meditate. He said, oh. <laughs> he goes like, this big motherfucker shouldn't have a pulse rate that low. It, it does a lot of good stuff. I didn't have a schedule. It did all day, man. There was no, there was no week. There was just wake up and go hard. That's that was pretty much the schedule in the beginning. Yep, med, uh, morning channel meditation will help quiet the mind. It helps you tune in. Because uh, I will tell you, for some of you who never meditated, typically the beginning is rough because you'll feel like ants and stuff because you just are running all over you. You may start itching. You're just not used to being still. It's a very, very a typical position to be in for the first few times. So it'd be interesting. All right. So for those of you who are still here, oh man, we went way long. All right. But see, we got into meditation. Irvin, I thought you were around. I thought it was the weed. Does weed give you a low blood pressure? I didn't know, know that. All right, so with that, be sure to get the Never Broke Action Pack. Uh, I have delayed the e-commerce course to February because there's a lot of stuff that's going on. So, but for those of you who buy the Never Broke Action Pack, I'm going to give you a four, you know, four hundred fifty dollars credit off that course. The course is not going to be cheap. I'm just putting that out there to you. So you buy the Never Broke Action Pack, you get a four hundred fifty dollars credit for that course, which can be used just one time. All right, hold on for you folks who want to know about the transcendental meditation. Let me let me find it for you because I've learned my lesson. Because I'll put it in here and I'll get like 80 emails. Transcendental. I'm saying it wrong. All right. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Okay. See, I like these screens, these streams, because actually I don't get bored, which really helps me do more of them. All right, this is what you want: transcendental meditation. They've got all kinds of centers. Um, and it's like you know, if you don't have the money, because it can't. You know, there's books. It's very, very helpful. Now, I don't do that type of meditation anymore. I do something that's really different because it works for me. I played around with it, but I have 10 minute sessions, 20 minute sessions. If I've just got a lot of shit going on, I'll do maybe an hour a day for a week. When I go that deep, I start to see stuff and it scares the shit out of me. So I don't do that anymore. The first time I did it, I saw some stuff and it kind of came true. And I was like, I don't really want to know this. <laughs> I really don't want to know this. Maybe later I'll tell y'all some more freaky stories, stuff that happened to me as a kid. But yeah, that's it. So you got it on the screen. Let's pop out of that. Get back. All right. So. Yeah, that may come later because, like I said, uh, I'm really a big proponent of meditation and power of subconscious mind because 
you have so much bullshit going on in your mind that slows you down. It's ridiculous. And until you start getting rid of it, you, it's your norm. You don't really know because that's every day you wake up with it and that's just normal. But yeah. All right. So with that, be sure to share this video with someone you care about. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe after the video renders. And be sure to get that Never Broke Action Pack. It'll save you a lot of money. All right. So I will... With that, I'm out.